Grinder, with ace four on the button, raises. Ah, good old Grinder, never lets us down. Katai folds the small blind. Sam Phillips in the big blind, he won his seat online. Oh, well maybe him then. Seems like a really standard open, especially for a guy with as wide a range as his Rocky. Right, this is actually way ahead of his standard opening range, so he can get value out of it later in the hand if he ends up making a hand or even with ace high sometimes. Yeah, I mean, he can bluff catch with ace high later on. If he makes an ace, no one's going to believe him. They just never believe him. Right, I also like Phillips' just call here. I think it's much better than three betting. Of course, he cannot fold. It's out of the question against a maniac like Ms. Rocky. <laughs> uh, but three betting is just going to put him in a tough spot. He starts the hand with about 35 blinds. Mizraki is calling for sure, pretty much no matter what he has. And four betting a lot of hands as well, which puts Phillips in a very bad spot as right. well. Right. If Phillips three bets this hand and then folds, it's a, it's a disaster. Where he's just throwing away chips and he's going to get bluffed a lot. If he three bets, Mizraki, as you said, is calling with almost his entire range. And then Phillips has to play a blow to pot out of position with a poor stack to pot ratio. It's just a bad spot. And ace-10 is a tough hand to play out of position in the first place. Yeah. You know, I like this call from Phillips. You can maybe three bet for value against Grinder, but I think there's no real harm in playing it this way. Both players miss the flop. Action check to the pre-flop aggressor. Grinder continues for 6K. Sam's not folding this for one bet. He calls. So, checking by Phillips, I like that. That's a good start. Um, <laughs> Mizraki betting, I think, is marginal. What do you think, Jonathan? I think, in general, it makes sense for Mizraki to bet, but this board is actually all over Phillips' range. If Mizraki has a checkback range at all, and he may not, this would be a, a spot to check back, I think. Right, because Mizraki does have some slight showdown value with his ace high. The thing that I understand less than Mizraki's continuation bet is Phillips' call. Now, this board... Of course, Mizraki's range is all over the place, but this board hits a lot of it, and Phillips doesn't really have anything going for him in this hand. He's got one over and backdoor straight draws, which are going to be really obvious if he hits them. So I'm not really sure what he's hoping is going to happen in the future, because Mizraki is a guy who, if he has a good hand, he's going to keep betting, and if he has absolutely nothing with no showdown value, he's going to keep betting, and it's going to be really hard to figure out what to do with Ace-10 if we're Phillips. It's just really hard for Phillips to make it even one more street to the river if he doesn't clearly improve because Ms. Rocky's just going to bet all his bad hands. It's just, I just don't like this spot. He's only lost 2,000, you know, chips because he already had the big blind posted. I don't know why he's calling. A turn card is the six of hearts. Not a terrible turn. Both players now have straight draws. It goes check, check. Grinder getting shinder. That doesn't work. A deuce. Ace 10 is the best hand. Well, there is very little reason to bet this unless Sam is just the absolute sickest value better ever. 9,500. And it turns out he is the sickest value better ever. Yes? Which one do you have? Jack 10 or Jack 9? Grind of Coles! Well, I guess his read of bluff was correct. Thinking that Ace 4 was winning. Incorrect. <laughs> Grinder convinced he had a busted draw. Nope. It seems to me Phillips sort of was involved in one of those car accidents where his, his Toyota flips over like seven times and somehow it lands on all four wheels and he's totally fine. And, you know, in fact, someone took like a video of it and it's on YouTube and he's making money from it or something. That's a pretty good analogy. <laughs> uh, I like Thanks. that analogy. Yeah, so Phillips... I don't think there's any way he's value betting here. It's just way too thin to try to value bet. Mizraki happens to have one of the four hands that has enough tiny showdown value to call Phillips that Phillips has beat. And that is all of the worst aces that do not pair up. And that's a very, very thin range because I don't think Grinder's going to be calling with King High. Although he did say he thought Phillips had Jack 10 or Jack 9. So maybe Grinder's calling with King High. Maybe he's calling with King Jack and King 10 also. Maybe. But. You know what? The thing is this. A lot of the time, Grinders, maybe Grinders always calling with those hands, but I would expect a lot of the time he's folding even those hands you just named. And so there's nothing Phillips can get called by that he can beat. So he's bluffing. I think he thinks he's bluffing, 
And well, there is something he can get called by that he can beat. Turns out there is. It's ace four, and Grinder has it. Now, yeah. another problem is if Grinder has the bottom of his range, like three four or three five here, then the only action that Grinder will put in here is to raise, and Phillips clearly cannot call a raise. I think Phillips, based on the turn action, believes that Grinder has a weak showdownable hand, like a pair of sixes or a pair of sevens, like five six or ten seven, a hand like that, and is trying to move Grinder off it. The problem is, as you can see, Grinder's not the kind of guy who's going to be moved off a hand like that. Right. That would be a pair. Grinder doesn't have a pair, and he's calling. <laughs> he is he has essentially as bad an ace as you can have. He's chopping with the other bad aces. As he says, he can only beat Jack-10 and Jack-9, and he's just that's what he does. He's the Grinder. He calls. And this is clearly a bluff by Phillips, and one that was like one of the best time bluffs of all time because it turns out to be one of the greatest value bets I've ever seen in my life. Accidental... You know, seven times flipping over, landing on your four tires value bets, yes. And, you know, to be fair to Phillips, we don't know much about him. He might have a really, really good thought process behind this, and he might actually be value betting. It's possible. There's I mean. a world where it's possible. And, you know, if we were in a court of law and the uh, the defense attorney said, but is it possible? You would say, yeah, I mean, it's possible. That's <laughs> what we're at right now. We're at, you know, one in every 10 million times maybe. Come on. Phillips is bluffing, and he gets super lucky to get called by a worse hand is what really happens. And Mizraki would have felt pretty good if he was right about that read, by the way, the Jack 10 or Jack 9. That would yeah. be pretty cool. He didn't feel super good probably the way it went down, though. No. Just he, guessing. He didn't like that. Folks, if you want to see another ace high call on the river that we think is way worse than this one, check out our Mark Newhouse versus Bill Cole YouTube video. You can see the link to that right there on the screen. Just go ahead and click that. Right, and if you guys want some more Hand of the Week videos, check out our playlists. We have an Elite Plays and a Disastrous Mistakes playlist. They are what they sound like, and they're both pretty fun in their own ways. Also, if you'd like a more detailed description of these hands, we go into it for about 40 minutes of each of these hands that we do a video on. Check out our podcast, Hand of the Week, on iTunes or any podcast aggregator you may have.